Shalom. All praise to the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, forever and ever and ever, giving all glory and praise to His holy name. For allowing us to come together, be able to reason together on these scriptures. I've been doing a prelude to Galatians, the third chapter, and I want you to be able to um, join in with me to look at before we get to Galatians the third chapter, I was going through scriptures to show the spirit and the understanding of the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees and the elders and the chief high priests so that you can be able to know by the time we get there. Now I suggest that you would go over the prelude to Galatians the third chapter. I went to Galatians the first chapter and Galatians the second chapter. So now we are um, still working on getting to Galatians third chapter but you have to understand the mindset and the things that were going on before we get there with our people and it's a lot to you know to look at because we destroy it for lack of knowledge so as always I'm gonna start off with Colossians 3 and 17 and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Mashiach, that was shy. In the name of the Lord and Savior, giving thanks to the Most High and the Father, by Hashem, Mashiach, that was shy. So all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. We give thanks to the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob been the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel for everything. Because he's worthy to be praised at Loyad, whose glorious and holy name for everything. Regardless of whatever you think or I think or anyone else think, he's going to get the praise. You know, because in the end, he's going to be all in all. Not Israel, not the most, not Hamashiach, Yahushai, or any other entity. The most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's going to be all in all. That's what this is all about. Because when he received the kingdom, forever and ever and ever, he's going to be all in all. Everybody's going to know about the most high. Believe this. Forever and ever and ever. So that's what it's all about. Our name's being written in the book of life so that we can see everlasting life. Enroll with the most high and Hamashiach, Yahushai, forever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah, so let's look at it because there's uh, a lot of doctrines that go out from the secular churches. I say secular because they're worldly churches. They're not of the, they're not the, the, the church of the Most High, the 12 tribes of Israel. They're dealing with pretty much bringing Gentiles, these other nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel in. And they use it to be able to uh, uh, exploit the people's minds, you know. If some don't know, hopefully they'll listen to this and really grasp what this is really talking about. Because you're going to either get it now, you're going to get it later, but you'll be made to get it or you'll perish. Point blank. You don't accept the Mashiach Yavashai as it is written? Hey, he said you're going to perish. They're going to perish. Isaiah 60 and 10 to 12. Read it for yourself. I mean, it's there. So, you know, I look at how, you know, studying what it is that they learn in the cemetery schools. Because it makes them dead. It's not making them alive. Because you're alive, you're going to know this book is talking to Israel. This is our book. The 12 tribes of Israel's book. Go tell my people Israel. And Paul was sent to the Israelites that were in these different lands. His letters was, was going out to the Israelites in these different lands who were known as Gentiles. You know, we're going to be a light to the Gentiles. Yeah, we are a light to the Gentiles. The Israelites, we're a light to the Gentiles. Who are people that are just like I'm a light to you Gentiles out there that you've been going to church all your life thinking that you're a Gentile, don't know you're an Israelite. You show the people, hey, read the Bible, that's you. It's talking about you. You are the Israelites. You are the true ethnic and biblical Jews that the Bible talking about. What they say, no, I'm Gentile. So this is who Paul's talking to. You, the same ones that's walking around here calling yourself a Gentile, been grafted in, don't know who you've been grafted in among. And I'm not, you know, I'm not force me, this is why I talk, so don't get a, have a problem with my voice, you know what I mean, but I'm just serious about my love for you, so that you can really come out of darkness to the light, the laws of the most high, and that's another thing they teach, that we're not under the law, we're under mercy and grace, but you're a Gentile, mercy and grace is only given to the Israelites, I can prove that, and have proved it, proven it with scriptures, but you're taught, you've been grafted in, don't know who you've been grafted in among, you got to speak in tongues, you do, all that I'm about, you're doing all that, nobody's interpreting what you're saying, but you're still doing it. I seen a whole church stand up, lady raised her hand and let it, let it down, and everybody stood up and started speaking in tongues. What about interpreting all that? Thousands of people speaking in tongues at the same time, it sounds like 
calling up demons or something. Like Paul said, hey, no trouble if you do that, you think people mad. That's what it sounded like. But if you ain't experienced that, then you don't know that the word is true. He said it. And that's what it felt like. For real, for real. So, let's look at it. Let's go into uh, the book of Matthew. Because Paul was not even thought of at this time. But we know Amashach Abishai was walking the earth in the flesh. So, let's look at it. Go to Matthew the 16th chapter and we're going to see how Masha was dealing with these Pharisees and scribes and elders and chief high priests and Sadducees so that you'll see the mindset of how they thought, how they operated and how they was against him and everybody that was with them then and now no matter how they say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of who, whatever name they use, is against him. They anti Mashiach. Because they was not with him. They was against him. And these are the people that's teaching the people the Bible. So-called. And they only had the law and the prophets understand this. So when you read the New Testament, there is no New Testament. That's the mindset you have to have. To be able to understand more spiritually of what's going on here because they only had the law and the prophets to go by especially when the Mashiach was shy walked the earth come on they didn't have the book of revelations that was uh, created approximately 90 AD to 96 AD somewhere in between there I mean all the, those years it was created then this Bible stops in 65 AD because we went to war in 65 AD to 70 AD with who? The superpower of the earth, Romans, and all of them that was joined with them, they took us down in 70 AD. And Mashiach Shai warned us. And all that's, you know, have been given, so you should already know this. Those that have been listening and paying attention to the Spirit of the Most High, bringing forth His truth in these last days. So let's look at it. Matthew, the 16th chapter, and the 6th verse. And it reads, Then Amashag Roshai said unto them, Take heed and beware. So pay attention. And beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He said, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. What's this leaven talking about? The moral corruption. How they have your mind morally destroyed that's why he's saying take heed of the leaven leaven is what you put in bread like yeast to make the bread rise so that the rise of wickedness of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees so they're the ones teaching the people he's telling you to beware take heed pay attention hear what I'm saying and be aware of the wickedness that's rising up in the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reason among themselves saying, well, let's read verse 5. It says, and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. So they forgot to bring bread, right? So he's telling them about take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the scribes. So just show you how our people can be out of the spirit. And they're the apostles. They're, they're the apostles. The head ones that was rooted and, and running with a Mashiach that was shot. And they reasoned among themselves, verse 7, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. So they thinking that it's, they thinking what? First and foremost, it's spiritual. And they thinking first and foremost, what? Carnal. With the flesh. They thinking, oh, he's talking about the, we didn't bring no bread. Because they forgot to bring bread. Say, oh, he's talking about we forgot to bring bread. Knowing that you have to put the yeast, which is the leaven, in the bread to make it rise. I mean, just off. <laughs> Verse 8. Which when Amashik Shai perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Are you serious? 
You think I said what I said in watching? Pay attention, take heed, and beware of the Pharisees because of the leaven that's in them, the wickedness that's in them. They didn't understand that. That's why they talking about some dang on bread. That's how people, the first thing they think is karma. He said, do you not understand, neither remember? This is, this is Israel. Now, it's a case scenario that you're going to see that they say, don't you, re he said, don't you remember the five loaves of 5,000 and how many baskets you took up after I fed 5,000 from five loaves and how many baskets you took up after the 5,000 was fed? You forgot about that? Listen, neither the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread? Because they're carnal. I got people, are, they think carnally first. I spoke not of you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not to, not, excuse me, then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, the yeast as in bread to make it rise, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. The doctrine, remember this, the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees, because it had to be contrary to the way I'm not was bringing the truth. He said, I'm the way to show you how to follow the truth, which is the laws of the Most High is going to lead to everlasting life. So they had to be contrary to him bringing forth the understanding of the laws of the Most High to us. Else you wouldn't be saying this. That ye should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Then understood they how that he bade them not be aware of the leaven of the bread, of bread that we eat. But of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. That's why these doctrines is very important, y'all. People looking over here, looking over there. This doctrine, that doctrine. This is what happens. That's why he said that. You got to be aware of these doctrines. Of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Because they were contrary to Mashiach Yavashai. And the doctrine infects others. And it's no different than today. You're over here, you're over there. That's so you know. You, you dealing with the doctrines of the Pharisees and the scribes, just like he's saying here. Not knowing. Let's go to, uh, I mean, throughout his ministry, this is who he's dealing with. Look at uh, Matthew, the 19th chapter. And let's start at verse 1. Matthew 19 and 1. We look at the first. We've got to look at this so that by the time we get to Galatians, you understand who it is, who that who is that have fooled the people with the works of the law. Because they're the ones that were teaching the people. But it wasn't the book of the law, but it was the works of the law. It's a difference. Let's look at it. Matthew 11, excuse me, uh, 19 and 1. And it came to pass that when the Mashek of Ashai had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee. And came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. He healed them there in Judea. Verse 3, pay attention. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. See? They came to him, tempting him. And saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So they tempted him. Meaning what? They're trying to attempt to 
Make you put him on trial, test him. See what he think. How he gonna behave himself behind them asking them this. Maliciously. Crafty. To put the proof of his feelings to make a judgment call for the way he felt. You know, tempted is like to try one's faith, try your faith, virtue and character. And some has enticed you to sin. Break the most, break the most high's laws. So they asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said to them, have you not read? But where would they read it? That's the question. What would they read? I'm talking to all the ones that don't believe in the Old Testament, the Old Scrolls, the Law and the Prophets. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain, they two shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain, no more two, but one flesh. What therefore the most I have joined together, let no man put asunder. So he went to the Old Testament. He had to go to the Old Testament. That's all they had to go by. Period. They said to him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Right? Right? Look at this. Because he's going to the Old Testament and a matter of fact, in the law. What they're saying, they asked, why did why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And that's in Deuteronomy 24th chapter. So they going to the law. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. We say, when a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he have found some uncleanness in her, or she have, you know, I'm not saying she's going to bring it, bring it on home, but he found uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Send her out of his house. And once she leaves his house, and when she has departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and give it, it in her hand, and send her out of his house so she go to marry some other man and he write her a bill of divorce and send her out of his house or if the latter husband died which took her to be his wife she marries another man after the first husband and give her a bill of divorce and she marry another man and this man died her former husband the first one she was with which sent her away sent her away may not take her again to be his wife. She cannot be his wife. After her second husband has died, she can't go back to her first husband. How many times did this didn't happen? After she, after that, she is defiled. You hear that? After that, she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Most High. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Most High thy power giveth thee for an inheritance. So this is what the, uh, the uh, Pharisees and are uh, speaking of. It also tells you in Ecclesiastes in the Apocrypha it says in Ecclesiasticus 25 and 26 it says if she go not as thou would have have her 
cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. That's said in the Apocrypha also. So, let's go back to what Amashiach that was shy said and giving some type of balance to this. Because that was like, I don't like you now, you know, I'll divorce you, get rid of you. It's not right. But, you can take it how you want to take it to see how Masha Gavashai brought it forth. Because it's specific. It's what he said. Matthew 19. And uh, I want to say this also. Show me the scriptures where a woman divorced a man. Where the scripture, the law is, okay, I don't like you no more. I'm going to divorce you as the husband. The woman divorcing the husband. What that's that? That's why it's very important to know who you with. Very important. So let's look at what my single shot said. Matthew 19 and 7 again. It says, They said to him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement? He just told him, Hey, what most I joined together, let no man put a son, he said. And to put her away. See, why did Moses say this? We just read this. It said, he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, hardness of your minds, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. He said, from the beginning it was not so. Mosai hates separation. He hates divorce. As it is written. So, the man is going to do what he's going to do because he's been given the privilege too. But everything is not right unless it's just say the most high. Let me give you uh, some balance here. Get Malachi 2 and 15. Let's read verse 14. And it reads, Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the most I have been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, men, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion? Isn't she your companion? And the wife of thy covenant? And did not he make one? As the Mashiach Roshai said, Yet had he the residue of the spirit and wherefore one that he might seek a righteous seed therefore take heed to your spirit watch how you roll it in the spirit and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth see that's that balance not dealing treacherously that's what he said though. that's why he said the hardness of your heart made you put him away Verse 16, listen to this closely, just like I told you. For the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of Israel said that he hated putting away. You hear that? Most high said he hated putting away. From one cover of violence with his garment, said the most high of hosts, therefore take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. See, that's why Master Yoshai is telling them. Because the heart is in your heart. They were dealing treacherously. You had to have a balance here to let them know, okay, just because you feel a certain way, you just get rid of no, nah, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. So I say don't deal, he said don't deal treacherously with them. Matthew 19 and 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for what? Fornication. Fornication. And shall marry another, committed adultery. And whosoever marry her which is put away, does commit adultery. That's serious. So you put away your wife, and it's not for fornication, 
she went to some other religion, some kind of other beliefs, it's a spiritual fornication, but she done went and laid with someone, adultery. And she go out and marry someone else, you commit adultery, he's saying. His disciples said to him, verse 10, in the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. He said, if, you, if it's like that, he said, it ain't good to marry. So you got to understand, he's telling the disciples, they hearing what he's saying to the Pharisees. And that's what they said to him. The disciples said to him, in the case of a man be so with his wife, if this is where it's supposed to be with a man and his wife, it is not good to marry. Then you know that, hey, they might have to put them away. See, it's not good to marry. But he said it to them, all men cannot receive this saying, say they to whom it is given. So everybody, all men ain't going to receive this saying, except for those to whom it was given. Who he's given to? Verse 3, the Pharisees. <laughs> to whom it was given. But there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs. So like they said, hey, it ain't good to marry. So someone that's not going to marry is called a eunuch. That's why I say, for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there are be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. I mean, those that's not going to have a woman. That's a eunuch. You know? Not going to be dealing with having a wife. But the apostle said in verse 10, said, his disciples said to him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. It's cold. They're keeping it real though. You know? And let you know that there had to be a problem with, because Peter was married with the women. Ain't nothing new under the sun. I mean, you're looking at Satan having his way from the garden to the time that we're speaking of here to now. So it is what it is. I mean, that's why it's very important that men and women look at all the things spiritually that we need to know to be able to No, you do it because when you look at um, Proverbs 21 and 19, this is kind of like what they're alluding to because women are going to be women. And it tells you Proverbs 21 and 19, it says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Contentious mean what? She's dealing with you, going back and forth with you. And an angry woman. She's angry all the time. She's so better to dwell in the wilderness. With a woman like that. That's why, you know, you're looking at it. You can't look at it one way. You know, it's like when she's contentious and angry, then she could, she could commit fornication. And we'll justify it. So it's very important that you know we we look at this and make sure that we don't. I look at it like I don't want to be like that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be one of those that's, that fits into the wickedness of men. That the Most High said, "You do this, you're gonna be wicked." But you want to look at the righteous of how you be righteous and keep whatever the Most High say or whatever's being brought forth of a Mashiach Galvashai, so that we can follow what it is that will please the Most High. We hate putting away. So you got to endure a lot. You got to endure a lot, but you got to know how to endure so that you're not, uh, you know, sinning. Bring the forth sin. 
back to these Pharisees and scribes and Sadducees and elders and chief high priests. Go to uh, Matthew, the 21st chapter. Let's look at, uh, well, Matthew, the 21st chapter and... Dealing with uh, a lot of uh, scriptures before them. Um, let's look at uh, Matthew 21 and 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. Now we go to chief priests and the elders and said, by what authority, by what power, what authority does thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Who you think you are? And what power are you doing these things? And who gave you the power to do the things you're doing? And the Master Shai answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing. I'm going to ask you something. Which, ye, if, which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Now what is this you're going to ask? The baptism of John. John the Baptist. Which was it? From heaven or of men? And they reason with themselves saying, if we shall say from heaven, if we say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. So they caught him in a trick bag, whether they're going to say from heaven or from men. And he answered the Master of Shai and said, We cannot tell you. We don't know. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. He said, But what think ye? Still talking to him. the chief priests and the elders. He said, What do you think? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. Two sons said, Hey, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. The first thing he said, I ain't going to work. I ain't doing no work. Then he thought about it. Then he went and did the work. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. He said, I'm going to go, but he ain't going to do the work. Said he's going to do it, but he didn't do it. Which of them twain, which one of these two, did the will of his father? They said to him, the first, Mashiach Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, truly I say to you, that the publicans and the harlots, the prostitutes, go into the kingdom of the Most High before you. That's deep. <laughs> well, see, people thinking that they all that, they all this and all that. And he said, hey, the public is and the prostitutes, the harlots, going to the kingdom before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness. And we even showed you through the spirit of John came to the Israelites, baptizing the Israelites, telling them to repent. For John came unto you, just John the Baptist. In the way of righteousness, in the way of keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. That's your righteousness when you read Deuteronomy 6 and 25. And you believe them not. See, you believe him. 
But the publicans and the harlots believed him. Hear that? The publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. He let you know. Just like you look at uh, we teach the truth and a lot of people even in their religious beliefs will put people down so hard where they feel because they, they out there doing the things of the world and he's telling you the publicists and the harlots believed him believed John and he tell them to repent ask for forgiveness for your sins that you're doing when you seen it and they, they didn't repent afterward that you might believe him and he told him said and that the public verse 31 that the public and the harlots go into the kingdom of the most high before you so who's going through this looking at what he's saying in the spirit or are you to the point where you gonna condemn condemn someone because they don't know as much as you know well they got an opportunity so they heard it and I've seen this over and over again those that they wouldn't even want to go to the people that I'm teaching because they're in such a lower state they coming from this type of background but well, they still doing it but they crying out sorry for what they've done repenting for what they've done but others will say, look at them because you know a little something, something. And just condemn them to hell. But he just said, publicans and sinners, as being prostitutes, harlots, believe John the Baptist. He said, repent, Israel, and be baptized with the word of the Most High, first and foremost. Because there's no no good if you be just be dipped in some water and brought up and you still gonna operate the same way you've been operating before you was dipped in the water. What good is that? That's what Mashiach Shai said in John 15 and 3. And now you are clean by the word which I have spoken unto you. The word cleans you up, makes a difference in your life. If you real, you unreal, you ain't real, you fake and phony and memorex, you ain't going to be following what the word says. You're going to follow what you want to follow, what you was doing before you even came into the truth, or before you start really re understanding this word. So this is very important when he said, hey, publicans and the harlots, the prostitutes, going into the kingdom before them. Who are you talking about? Verse 23, and when he was come into the temple, the chief priests, the chief priests, the top priests, and the elders of the people, of the Israelites, of we the Israelites. That's what he's talking about. That the publicans and the harlots going into the kingdom before them. You better think about this. A lot of you following those same type of spirits. That's here right now. That's why, that's why the spirit had me going to this before you get to Galatians, the third chapter. Because you got to understand what they were dealing with. That's why I say, beware of the doctrines. The things that they're teaching the people. Go to Mark 7 and 9. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandment of the Most High, that ye may keep your own tradition. You see? They reject the commandment of the Most High. That they may keep their own tradition. Then, all the way to now, it's going to be to the end. Did the Most High just smash all of that? In the judgment. Whether now or later, but it's happening. It's going to happen. If it ain't happened, it's going to happen. Believe that. Matthew 21, 35. Here another parable. Here another riddle. There was a certain household that was planted a vineyard and heads it round about. 
and dig the wine press in it and build a tower and let it out to the husbandmen, which are the farmers, and went into a far country, left and went into a far country. So he done, he done, he done planted this vineyard and hedged it all around about and dig the wine press in it. Verse 34. And when the time of the few drew near, and it was time to harvest, he sent his servants to the husbandman, sent his servants to the farmer, that they might receive the fruits of it. They might receive the fruits of the grapes that were grown. And the husband took his servants and beat one and killed another and stone another. Again he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. It's a prayer, it's a riddle. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reference my son. Surely they're going to reference my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him. Let's put him to death. And let us seize on his inheritance. Let us have all his inheritance. Right? Look at everything that his father planned to give his son. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him and killed him. Most high power, or when the power, the master, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, will he do? What will he do unto those husbandmen? What will he do unto those that had this precious vineyard? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. My Shai said it to them. Did you never read in the scriptures? Where's this gonna be at? Did you never read in the scriptures? Where's this gonna be at? In the New Testament or the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, because you gotta understand, this is all he had to go by is the law and the prophets. There is no New Testament. This New Testament that we read now compiled in 325 AD, approximately. Come on, in the Council of Nicaea. Now listen, he said, verse 42, And my shall I said unto them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? This is the most high's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of the most high shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. It's going to be taken from them. And give it to a nation, bring forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. Whoever gonna fall on this stone gonna be broken. But on whosoever it follow, it shall fall, this stone fall on, it will grind him to powder. So you say you follow this stone, it's gonna be made to be worthy of the kingdom. But if that stone fall on you, it's going to grind you to powder. And when the chief priest and the first.